This is a message to all viewers, all listeners. As I said before, there will be stories on this channel that may be offensive to some. That may be harsh to some. That may be a little bit hurtful to some. And some people are forced to relive these stories in their mind when they don't want to. So let's just keep in mind that when we put these stories together, we're not on here trying to glorify anything. We're not on here trying to glamorize the criminal lifestyle. We're on here documenting actual history and giving people the opportunity to explain to the world how their life went astray and they ended up going down the wrong path. So once again, let's be respectful and let's learn something. He said, ah, man, you getting, them, you getting that shit from that dude right there, bottled up already and touched up, you losing. This is how you make the money. I'm like, what we gonna do with that? I go, we chef this, we cook this. I don't know how to do that, but it taught me. He went in the kitchen, did some crazy shit, put that on the stove, boom, 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 some soda, some ice, blew that bitch. I said, I was like, what the? Got hard as a rock, yeah. I'm like, God, you know what I mean? You got something here, you know what I mean? We all from LG. You know, LG is a project of seven buildings, you know what I mean? It's not the biggest project, you know, you know, I got Marcy, got like 20 some buildings, Fort Green, got like, you know, 14, 15 buildings, you know, but seven buildings within like a one block radius from, you know, Lafayette and Franklin to, you know, Lafayette and Clarkson, one block. And we right there, but we got tall buildings, you know, I mean, 20 stories, you know, 15 stories. So if you break that down, that's, you know, it, it, it'll break down because Marcy's what? Five stories, Fort Green is five, six stories. I didn't know y'all had 20 story buildings. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. We got we got three 20 story buildings, I believe. We got like a two 15 stories and two 13 stories, something like that. You know what I mean? Or you break it down to seven, you know, it's like it, it breaks down. But the three storm buildings, 433, which I was from, that's the back building. And you know, you got 456, which is on, on the decal side, which is 20 stories, then you have the front building that represents you first come to LG, 345. That was the 20 story. Then you got the little the little ones in between and you know, the 13. The littlest one I believe is like 13, if I'm not mistaken. So, you know, we was, you know, we had a little, little, like a little village. That was a little village, you know what I mean? But, you know, not, I moved to LG when I was about, wow, in the 70s, bro, like around. 70, 75, 76. Where you moved from? I moved from East New York. I was born in Pink Houses, East New York. Mm. And then from East New York, I was um, 1133 Stanley Avenue by the old TSS. You know, my, my two dudes know where that's at, by the dip and all that. Facts. You know, it's out there. And I have family that moved to LG. And then my mom, her sister lived there, my aunt. So my aunt, you know, my mom applied for it and she got it. And then we moved to LG in the early 70s, me and my big brother Ralphie. Everybody know my brother Ralph, you know? So we was down there, you know, Puerto Ricans, you know, growing up and went to the hood, you know, best die. And like, you know, we was like standout Puerto Ricans. A few Puerto Rican families in there. But as time went on, we was the ones that, you know, was outside, you know, hanging out, you know, and, and getting to know the bros, you know, and just meeting childhood friends. That's what we were, just kids, man, we was kids. We was kids just out there doing what kids do, you know? playing, bugging out, doing things, you know, what kids do. And basically after that, you know, not family moved down the hall, you know, he had a big family, a little big family moved in, but you know, he was young, he was younger than me. He was younger than me, but you could tell like, that was the one, you know what I mean? Like, you gotta watch this little boy, bad mother, you know what I mean? You know, he was out, he was outside, you know, running around. And as we got older, got older, you started seeing like, he was like a, he wasn't a, he wasn't a, a follower. You could tell he was a leader, you know what I mean? You could tell he was gonna be a leader in whatever choices or decisions he made, or uh, whichever route he wanted to go, you feel me? Hmm. And, and, and his family, big family, the Davis family, you know, we lived next door. But, you know, I have my set of, my, my set of friends, 
me. As we got older now, we started with the basketball tournament. We had a great basketball tournament. Sullivan Smith Memorial Tournament in, in Brooklyn. Mm. Great tournament. Great, great. Mad players come down. NBA players, you know, college players come down to play. Like it was a live tournament. You know, what live. type of NBA players was coming to that tournament? Man, we had we had Mo Scurry come down. Mo Scurry was down there. Mark Jackson came through, played in the tournament. You know, we had Will Be Free come down. We had Lloyd Daniels come down. And he played. We had Gerald Green. You know, that, you know he was in a um, college player. You know, Hunter Villanova he played there. Mm. Good player. We had a lot of players, man. A lot of good high school players. Like high school coaches used to come down there, college and scout, scout players down there, you know? Then we had other 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 teams from other hoods, like NA Rock. They used to come down, they had a team, they had a nice team. NA Rock had a nice team, man, you know? They used to come down there, they had their own team. Then we had, um, from up there by, what is that? Um, by Delphi, I believe, pre-teen, not pre-teen classic. Um, Sandra had a lead, and it was a, a lady named Sandra, if you know, back then. She had a team, she brought them down there. And they was up to by Delphi, by the Fort Greene area. Oh man, they had a crew too, man. We, 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 I think it was Hoop Connection, if I'm not mistaken. And they would come down there, like other people would bring their teams down there to play in that tournament, you mm-hmm. know? And it was like live, like five o'clock. Tate, it was a white boy, Tate coming down playing. And we had No Avenue coming, my boy Bobby Cunningham, my boy Miami from NA Rock. They had a crew, man. What like, years was this like? 85, 86, 87. When, you know, LG was all love, bro. Like, that was a project that was love. Like, like you know, they come through. Then after the game, they don't even go home. You know how sometimes you come down there, you go to games, you break out? They stay, man. They come in the projects, come in the back, chill out. They just hang out, you know? Like, 86, 87, 88, chill out all night. Just doing what we do, you know, balling still, helping each other out, other kids ball. Like it was a lit tournament, man. It was a very real good. And since you get off the train, since you get off the that was like all rucker of, of like Harlem, you know what I mean? That was all rucker. That was the Brooklyn rucker, you know? And you get off that train on Carson Avenue, the five o'clock game, you rush into that game. Cause you hear the crowd like like you in the garden, bro. Like ah, mumbling, kid. Kids in the trees, man. Like it was it was all love, you know? We was looking forward to seeing these dudes come down here, man. You know, you know, most scary. You know, come on, man. It was, it was love, man. It's it crazy love, you know. And we grew up at a at a good time, man. At a great time. That was a great era, man. You know what I mean? That was a great era. Looking back at it, that was a great era of my life. You know, growing up, and and we all had structures. You know, of you know, ball. Some people like we had a lot of DJs coming in from Mississippi for my project. Big Daddy King DJ. And he was helping kids doing music. So we had a lot of kids going different routes. And you know, we all went the ball route. I'm sure every hood, every hood got that story, you know, playing basketball and doing this and that. It was all good. It was just growing up. Young kids just growing up in our environment, you know, just finding things to do. Because there wasn't much to do. So we find things to do. We made it fun. We made it night like, playing manhunt at night and doing all that good shit. You know, things that kids do, you know? Mm. And, we, and you know, we just was all up from the front to the back now. Now, you know, we got seven buildings now. We was in the back, but from the front to the back, it was all love. You know, it wasn't like some part, we don't mess with them dudes in the front. We don't mess with them dudes in the middle. Now it was all love, man. It was LG love, man. That's what it was LG love. We used to have our little, our little jams back there. You know, our little um, night jams and LG day. It was lit. Everybody come down. North Street Avenue, East New York dudes come down, you know. God bless, you know what I mean? Everybody should come down. Like, was it dudes getting money in LG Not, at that time? Like, you had, you had, you had, you had the Hamilton brothers down there. They was doing their thing, and they had it on lock down there. And you know, they was, they had the projects good, projects were safe. And this was, was this was before crack, when it was just coke, right? Yeah, when Jr. When God bless Jr. Good dude, man. Like he, yeah, he, he had morals. You know, he knew the game. You know, he knew the game. He had. He had principles, he had respect, you know, he wasn't just no, you know, no, no, no joker just getting money, you know, because you can't move like that, you know, it won't last long. And he, he was a good dude, you know, he was a real good dude, and he kept the projects good, kept the young kids safe, you know, he was getting it. But now we're getting older now, you know, we're saying like, damn, you know, we want to make this money. 
they pulling up in Jaguars and BMWs. That's what we see. You know, we sitting outside, we see that, damn, the big cell phones back then, the hell, you know? And they used to get beeper calls and stuff. We used to ask the beepers for them. You know, that's how we make our money. We was hustling. We was young kids. What you mean? I used to run. I used to run to the payphone for them. Yeah, yeah. They used to give the people check this number. Who this calling for me? And we used to have a bunch of quarters. And we run to the payphone. Who this? Da da da. Yo, it's so and so. Boo. If it's worth it, they'll come. They'll come over there. If not, I'm calling back. You know what I mean? But I, you know, it was like it was crazy. We had he had a, say, uh, his own payphone on the side of four thirty three. That was the payphone. You know, nobody was getting on that phone or not. It was like it was like back of dollar, kid. <laughs> like a jack. <laughs> it was a jack, kid. Yeah, every every hood had one of those back in the days yeah, that the yeah. whole dudes be calling from Rikers Island to the pay for. Yeah, and it rings like I'm about to say, it rings. Mm -hmm. So in certain times, you got to stand my head. Don't let nobody use this phone. I'm waiting for a phone call, and them phone calls is coming like clockwork. You know, crazy. Whether it was other activities going on, we was young, but you know, so be it. But now, as you know, as time get older, you know, we start like, man, you know, we want to, you know, we want part of the action, but you know. Uh, the respect that they have for our moms, like I said, they're respectful dudes, man, they're respectful guy. You know? He was like, respectful my moms, you know, like, nah, man, you can't get out of here, man. Go to Nazi, go whatever. But, like I said, my boy Nut was a little, you know, younger kid, you know? But he lived on my floor. That's how me and him got real tight. Because he's always come over my house. You know, and I used to, my, like, my moms and stuff, you know, like, we went to Catholic school. He didn't know he was in the projects. But we went to the Catholic school. There's a few of us in the projects that went to the Catholic school, Fort Green Catholic school. And me being one of them, me, my family, me and my brother, and World Wise and his family, and they had, they had, they had, they had I believe, like, what, 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 like four brothers, a sister, maybe five of them, one and, and a girl, and they all went to Catholic school. You know what I mean? We was paying for that, you know. So. So they was in Catholic school, we was in Catholic school. So my mother, like, we was in probably my mother was not working, you know? But that was the gift and the curse because by her working out like that and going here, we had enough time in that house, you know? We was alone a lot, me and my brother. You know what I mean? So that gave us a lot of time. Like, some of these kids' mothers is home all day and whatever, whatever. But the, our house was the spot to be at, you know? Because my mom's this and that. We'll, we act like we go to school, we make a quick U turn and head back. My mom didn't come home at 6 o'clock. We got all day in the house, you know? So my house is the spot to be. You know, we had all the games there, the session, you know, Atari games, ColecoVision, them days. And you know, he used to always come by, you know, hang out with us, whatever. But one thing about him, he used to always drift off. And we were older cats, because he had a lot of uncles, you know? A lot of big uncles and stuff, you know? So he would be with older cats, and I'd be like, what's wrong with that dude, man? What's up with that dude? But they were schooling, bro, you know what I mean? Little do they know, they were schooling, bro, you know? And bro was laying down the foundation for what made us the men that we are today, you know what I mean? Like, but we ain't know yet. We ain't know yet. Get dip off, come back, you know? Come back with money and shit, like, what the fuck? I'm telling you, man, fuck with me, fuck with me. I'm like, damn, nigga, all right. Then, you know, as time went on, he started knowing what he was doing. He started, you know, rubbing elbows with different dudes. And Nut was a fighter, like, you know, he was good with his hands. He was good with his hands, he was nice. You know, so, you know, a lot of dudes took up to him and he grew up fast, he grew up real fast. He manned up real quick. You know, but we still developing, he grew up. He manned up, you know? And the DFY bids, I never did all that. You know what I mean, he did DFY bids. And... Was y'all doing shit when he caught his DFY bid or he was out there doing shit on his own catching nah, DFY? But he caught his DFY, but he was doing dumb stuff, snatching chains, you know? Bombing people, beating people up, catching stupid charges. Not really. We wasn't messing with each other then. This we, was like when he we, was like what, thirteen? Yeah, thirteen, fourteen. You know, he was, he was, like I said, we was in different brackets. Me, I, like I was with me, my man Sambo, my man Hero, my man Jimbo. You know, we was in the back holding that down. You know, and we was just doing all the thing. And we met my man Moose. My man Big Moose put us on to a little game. You know, they had a, they had a spot around the corner on Clifton Place. And they used to give us some little tops, you know, they sort of jingle, that's how you do this and do that. So he's like, all right, he's trying it, you know. What you mean, y'all was, was dipping and dabbing with selling a little, what this was, this crack was out now? The crack ever, yeah, the crack ever was out. It was, this was like, this was like 88, 87, 88, you know. Nut did a DFY bid, and when he did his little bid, we just started getting the game. Just, you know, little, little, little vows. Dude was giving us little vows, you know, 
blessing us with little vials, little packages in and there, a hundred packs and stuff like that. Take us three days to move it. You know, we ain't, we ain't just playing with it. You know, we ain't no, you know, just playing with it. And and Nut was came home off the DFY bed, and he had met this other cat in there. And when he came home, he met some Brevoid dudes, and then he started hanging out in Brevoid. And then from Brevoid, he went to you know he met a few other cats and started dancing. Now then we're going to Midtown. Then we started doing the Midtown thing. And then Nut was just getting money. He was out of his time. Like he was just getting money and, and coming through. The first dude to come through with the with the with the MB5 125, freelance suits velour, you know, like coming through like I had the game, scooters, jewelry, like we like, you know, we get the little nugget watch or the little little red guy. He was different. You know, he was different. He was buying links and, and, and cables and you know, like you know, like he was a rapper or something, you know, so we like, damn, you know. But he was ahead of his time. And how old was he at that time? Then I had to be 15, 16, man. Running around with big chains on and running around with the um, velour sweatsuits on. Felize. Where was he getting that type of style from? Like from. Yeah, but he got that style from my man Shaborn. My man Shaborn from 456. LG. Everybody knows Sha. My man Shaborn, he's a date sweet tea. You know? He was a date sweet tea. And he took nothing under his wing, you know? And, and showed him the game. You know, showed him the game, showed him style, and shy the way he dressed. You know, like, like the style. You know, like son was wearing, shop born was wearing big ass hercs and shit around him and all of that at that time. All that, all that, all that. Shabon, Shabon was that dude. Shabon been that dude, always been that dude, still that dude. You know what I mean? The homie be home soon, but you know, he he schooled nut. He gave nut the blueprint, and then nut ran with it. You know what I mean? Nut ran with it. You know. Like, like he, he got around him, and when he was around him, you know, you could be around a real dude, but some dudes don't know how to act around a real dude and don't take the blueprint. You know, a lot of people don't take the blueprint, you know, and that's the key to it, you know? Everybody just wanna be like, you know, oh, uh, they for this thing, I'm gonna do my own thing, or, you know, you know, uh, for whatever reason, they just don't, they just don't learn from the brother. They think they know it all. And he learned from Sha, and he learned and learned. And Sha had him running for a while. I was like his little brother. Now, Shot Boom bringing him around, Sweet T, he bringing him around with him, Queens Cats, you know, Benny, and all these dudes. Now, young, young. He around them dudes in Queens and all the kids, and he seen what he seen. Now, he won, he got the taste for it. He got the taste for it. Then he came back to the hood, you know what I mean, with that drive. You know, started with the Midtown, started with this, and he said, you know what, I'm not doing that, I'm not doing the barbies no more. Then Nut started going to Fort Greene. Like he was traveling around. Like we stayed at LG. We was having a good, we'll go around and move around, but you know, LG was our, our, our home, you know what I mean? He'll go around. Nut started going to Fort Greene. Now he goes to Fort Greene and comes back and started messing with the homies, um, Corky and CD Caesar. Them are two brothers from Fort Greene. You know what I mean? They was out there doing their thing, older guys. No. They, they black or they Spanish? They Spanish. I believe they Spanish. They mix. They mm. mix. God bless. You know what I mean? And Corky was a cool dude. You know? Cool dude. You know? Cool dude. I got to know him after. Like, all these dudes like right here, even though I was older than that, I got to know these dudes through nothing. Because as the time goes on, we kick it. I can tell you how the whole story, you know, evolved. You know, evolved. It's, you got, it's all going to become one. But he got to... He got them dudes blessing him, you know? Now he's coming around with the joints and stuff like that. Now I'm like, yo, you know what I mean? He's coming around with, with, with white, you know what I mean? I'm like, what the fuck is this? And he said, nah, man, you getting, them, you getting that shit from that dude right there, bottled up already and touched up, you losing. This is how you make the money. I'm like, what are we gonna do with that? I go, we chef this, we cook this. I don't know how to do that, but it taught me. He had, I'm telling you, he had, he had, he went in the kitchen, did some crazy shit, put that on the stove, boom, 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 some soda, some ice, blew that bitch. I said, I was like, what the? Got hard as a rock, kid. Yeah. I'm like, God, you know what I mean? We got something here, you know what I mean? They said, this how we gotta do it now. So I'm touching it up, everybody done, putting that twerk in, and God damn, yo, we just, we just take it off, you know what I mean? We just took off, you know what I mean? He was just like, yo, that's how we gonna do it. 
And he just, you know, showed me, he showed me. Cause I was getting stuff from homies, you know, just, you know, touched up already, you know, the vibes already, you know, get, getting the PC off or certain shit, you know? That ain't, that ain't it, you know, but when you young, whatever, but I'm just showing you where his head was at back then. No, at first, at first we was coming in. We was coming in. We had, we had vowed. He went to see the homie. He went to see the homie CD in them, and cork and came in with a garbage bag full of vows, right? And we was getting it. We was, we was, we was offering it. You know what oh, I'm saying? So this was before. This was before he showed you. You saw him cook the shit up and all of that. Yeah, this is yeah. Before I, so, I got before that. Before so that. at first they was hitting some with straight vows. Yeah. Yes. Vows. And you said vows. one day he just came in. Then one day he met. At Porter Rock. Porter Rock is from, I think, up there by, by um, Brevoy. Uh, old school Porter Rock. People know who he is. You know, if you out there, BK, you know Porto. You know, old school Porter. Not from LG, not Little Porto. OG Porter Rock. You know what I mean? He was out there. And he took a liking to Nut. You know? And Nut started, had family out of something. He met some Triple A started going out of town. So, Nut money was up. And went out of town and came back he was doing with this kid named Porto you know and then Porto he'll go there and Porto would do his thing for him they give him the bread and Porto would chef for him and I think he would pay Porto and he'd be like yo you know he seen Porto taking the extras you know I guess Porto was chefing and whatever extra Porto cup and give him what he paid for he's like nah don't work like that so you know, show me how to do this so Porto schooled him to the game and showed him how to whip and that's how I learned not know how to whip. He was like the whip master, kid. You know what I mean? It'd it take a buck and make it to a 250 if you want it. Mm. You feel me? <laughs> you feel me? And now you're taking that out of town to Maryland. In New York, it might not slide to whatever. Now you're going out of state. Now he's he, he going out of state before we even thought about going out of state. Like, you know what I mean? Up to Maryland. He was up in Maryland. I think Annapolis. He was up in Annapolis, Maryland. And... Then when he came back from that, after a few times that I was doing what I was doing, you know, on a little project, like I said, messing with my man Moose, you know, sitting on the bench right there, doing whatever I want to do, you know, letting him go as they go. He's like, yo, you ain't doing it like that, man. This is how you got to, you know, this is how it's done. And that's when he came back with the white, you know, and maybe he had like a half a bit, he had like a half a bird, and he came out, what the fuck you going to do with that? And then he showed me the whip game. And he showed me open a new lane for me now. Now I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like, damn, it's like that. And that's how we started rocking. And as time goes on, I'm learning, but I still wasn't really, you know, getting into that. I was still doing it the way I was doing it. You know, he was showing me roles, you know? Cause me, me and bro, you know, we always did us as time goes on. But me and him together, getting that dollar together, together, it was always like, you know, I was I was in my lane and he was in his lane. We had that respect for each other, and we ever needed each other. It was a phone call away. You know what I mean? He had his team, I had my team. You know what I mean? Mm. But we were we was like of a kind, and together, me and him doing it, it was like a bumping heads. You know? But not you know you know nothing. You know he liked to party and do this and do that, which I like to too. Who did it? You know? But you know he had his certain ways with him. You know? So what we did was I had my lane, he had his lane. And then when he put me on to that and blessed me with some of that, I said, yo, take that right here. You don't really give me back whatever. I said, love. My boy, rest in peace, wise, put me on to New London, Connecticut. You know what I mean? And that, that, that changed my life right there. You know, from sitting on the back, on the bench of the project to, you know, doing that, I went up to New London, Connecticut. You know, and I went out there and wise told me about it. And me and my cousin went out there. And, you know, he wasn't a hustler, you know, but he tried it, you know. He liked that fast cash, you know, doing all this shit. But, you know, I went out there and I said, oh, something out here. I, I feel it. You know, and we came back. You know, it took a little long the first time. You know, the first time out there, I said, nah, I like that town. And then I went back out there. You know, and I kept on going and going. And, and that was a turning point. I, I took over, you know, you know, I was doing my thing and I caught my bed. That's when I caught a bid, though. And I left in 89. So all this I'm talking about is from like 87 to 88. It happened quick. You know? It happened quick. Like, How old was you when you was going out to CT? I 
I'm, when I went to Connecticut, I was 17 years old. I'm 16, just turning 17. Jumped on the Amtrak, had a, had a bomb in my pocket and in my bag. I probably had like a $5,000 bomb in my bag. Jumped on the Metro Amtrak, ain't know where I was going. Why just told me to take it to New London, Connecticut. There's a hotel out there, the, the, the Ramada Inn or the Radisson Hotel. Go get a room there. Have somebody check you in. I want to check my, my cousin out there. He'll, he'll meet you at the train. He'll check you in. And you go to get a hotel room. And you go to Truman Street. That's all I know. So, you know, not that ain't much going off. You know what I mean? But at that time, you know, we was taking chances. You know what I mean? Risk takers. And I did what I did have to do. Got to the hotel. They checked me in. I paid for the room for like three nights. I woke up in the morning. And I took a cab to Truman Street. That's the only thing I knew. That was a strip. Go to Truman Street. I went to Truman Street, started walking around, looking around. I, I had like a 500 pack on me. I took out there with me. I stashed it, kept like three or four joints in my mouth, walking around. And before you know it, somebody, yo, you got one, two. Now, the value was different. My 500 joints in New York was going for 20 out there. Mm. You know? So, so now I'm like, whoa. I mean, I get used to this, you know, and I started rocking like that. And the town was nice, not too far by. It's not like going south. I was going up there, Maryland, and all that three hours, four and a half hours. That was, that was too much of a ride for me. I mean, I was like an hour and a half, two hours, 95 straight. You know, as, as time when I knew about it, when I got older, I found out about it, you know. But, you know, I, I, it, was a, it, was a, it was sweet for me. And I found my home. And when I took off from there, we took off. You know what I mean? And I used to come back there with me out there after a while. He ended up coming out there with me. And I went out to Maryland with him too a few times. But like, I like my, my mess. But then I got jammed up for the charge in New York, a gun charge, went up north from 89 to 91. And that's when, you know, a lot of things change. LG done change, different kids growing up, the young ones from the front, you know? Cause like I said, my man Fruit, my man, Biz, my man, um, the young boys up there, Porter Rock, Black Red, all of them was running wild up there, you know what I mean? It was young kids running, you know, was coming up, getting their name, but I went about mine with the game, you know what I mean? They went about theirs, but you know, bobbing, you know, doing what they had to do, you know, busting that gun, you know what I mean? Doing what they had to do, you know? So everybody got different stories, you know? LG got a bunch of stories, kid. You know, it ain't just about, like, what you see now, you hear now, C and B, this and that, world, not, not. Before all of that stuff, it was love. We all had love for each other. But you know, when the drug game comes out, and the crack era comes out, and that money gets involved, best friends become strangers, kid. All childhood friends, you know what I mean? Childhood friends, man. And childhood friends that would go to war for each other back in the days. From the front to the back, you couldn't come to LG and think, "Oh, I'm gonna go fuck Mikey up right there." And, and one of them LG dudes from any building is gonna let that happen. Not gonna happen, bro. And that's why we had dudes from East New York, from Brooklyn, from Best Star, from any rock. They used to come to LG Friday nights. And then, mind you, before all that happened, before we get in the game, we had the best boosters in Brooklyn. You know what I mean? We had Red. Tawana, God bless. We had Tisha, we had Sean, God bless. Tawana, the Gabbana girls, all that, all that started in LG. You know, all that started in LG, and it was out there taking everything, you know, and coming back in the hood, kept us flies, butter sauce, this, that. We was, that, we was living, man. We was living, so you know, like we had everything came out of there. You know what I mean? You know everything, and dudes would come from all over to see them girls to buy stuff. Jill, we had real, we, they was, there was no jokes, huh? there was no joke, and we, we used to go, we was kids, go hold them down, you know what I mean, right in the store, security tried to grab them, we was, you know, we did a lot of things as kids, you know, we did a lot of things as kids that I look back at and be like, yeah, I was a wild boy, you know, but, you know, you know, um, some made it out, some didn't, you know, and some got a story to tell, and some, you know, just was in the way, you know, and a lot of these dudes that I'm naming and doing this and meaning I'm going all that, you know, they went out like suckers. They end up telling and, and doing this and 
But before all of that, man, LG was love, man. LG was love. That's what that's what I'm speaking about. That's what I really want to get out there. How the, the love was when that crack game came and that money came. Like I said, man, things change, you know. And and dudes that 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 you seen like was brothers, man, eating at the same table together. 